could, could you just touch on it oh. briefly, briefly yeah, on the uh, morality of Christianity versus the morality of capitalism and how what the contradiction there is? Sure. I mean, I, I, I think that the, if you think about the morality of Christianity, the essence of Christianity, of the morality of Christianity, is sacrifice. It's suffering for a cause, a cause external to you, a cause that you have no interest in this life in, only in another life, in a mystical life, in a, in a pretend life. So it's all about sacrificing for others. So think about Jesus on a cross. I, I don't know how many of you follow Jordan Peterson. Or watch Jordan Peterson. Like Jordan Peterson views Jesus on a cross as a superhero. He is the ultimate human hero. Why? Because he's willing to give up his life in the most brutal, horrible death for sins other people committed. It's the ultimate altruistic act. It's the ultimate act of self-negation and of living for other people. And that's the moral symbol. So you to be moral. The ultimate to be moral. The standard of morality is the superhero. Dying, not for sins he committed. That would be understandable. If you commit sins, you pay for them. But for sins other people commit. Right? For nothing he did. For no reason he dies. And so the whole idea here is that you should live for other people. You should sacrifice for other people. You should die for other people. Right? If you look at saints, Christian saints. Ever seen a painting of a Christian saint smiling? <laughs> no. That would defeat the idea of a saint. What makes you a saint is not helping other people. If helping other people made you a saint, then Bill Gates would be a saint. Then... Carnegie and 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 and, uh, and uh, what's his name uh, uh, Morgan and uh, Rockefeller would be saints. The, the great you know entrepreneurs and industrialists in Korea would be saints because they helped other people. They changed the world. They made the world a better place for millions and billions of people. Right? Businessmen are saints, but no, they're not saints. Christianity doesn't think they're saints. Why? Because they benefited from helping other people. They helped themselves while helping other people. And that's not acceptable in Christianity. It has to be pure. You have to live for others. You have to suffer in helping others to be a saint. So Mother Teresa, who helped very few people, relatively speaking, is a saint because she suffered. She had a miserable life. That made her a saint. If you have a good life while helping other people, you don't get saint. Lots of people have helped more people than Mother Teresa. Lots of people have helped, I mean, from businessmen help the world more than Mother Teresa, but even charity workers, you know, social workers go out there and work with poor people. There are lots of people who have done more good than Mother Teresa, but they didn't suffer as much. They didn't project that suffering. They didn't make a big deal of their suffering. She did. She became a saint. That's the standard. Right? So Christianity at the end of the day is about is about sacrifice. It's about altruism. It's about living for others. And that's what gets you into heaven. And when you don't do that, Christians who pursue their own interests in this world and, you know, accumulate wealth maybe, run a business, do stuff like that, they feel guilty. So guilt is part of Christianity because uh, altruism is anti-life. And when you live, you feel guilty because you should have been Mother Teresa. You should have suffered. And, and I think there's this real conflict. And that's why you can't ground, you can't base capitalism on Christianity. Because capitalism is about succeeding. It's about trading. It's about win-win relationship. Not about suffering. Not about sacrifice. Not about giving. It's about making, producing, trading. And, and there's nothing, Christianity's not about that. It's not the essential of it. You want to ask about this? Yes. Okay, so let, yeah. Um, what would you say to those who would who describe Christianity and an essential element of Christianity as being, oh, there is a spark of the divine in in everyone, Pot potentially? I'm not exactly sure about what the Christian totally believes, yeah. but that that every person is a value or potential value, and how that's kind of opposed to the sort of low 
low-hanging fruit of this, oh, altruism is evil? Well, I think that Christianity is mixed, right? And any, any primitive philosophy, which is what religion is, is mixed and contradictory. And Ayn Rand said that the one good thing about Christianity, the one thing that Christianity added, if you will, to Western civilization, the only thing, really, that it added in terms of a value, is this idea that the individual matter, right? That you had this spark of divinity, and therefore you mattered in some way. Isn't that a big deal? See, I, I think she overestimates that. I mean, that's my personal view. I think that already existed in Greece. Individuals mattered. Look at Greek sculpture and tell me that they didn't care about individuals. So I don't think that contribution to Christianity, and if you look at Christian history, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Christian history doesn't care that you have a divine spark, right? Because if you look at the periods where Christianity dominates, it oppresses you, it crushes you, it commands you, it, it, it doesn't care about your opinion, it doesn't care about anything about you as an individual. Sacrifice to God, sacrifice to the church, sacrifice to your fellow man, that's it. Right? So when Christianity is dominant during the Dark Ages, during the reign of the Catholic Church, or even in Calvin's dictatorship, right? if you want the Protestants, right? what, was Cal what did Calvin do with the spark of divine divinity in every human being? He created a dictatorship because these little sparks needed to be told what to do and how to behave, and, 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 and pain needed to be inflicted on them. And if you read Martin Luther, what does Martin Luther write about this world? He says, this world is horrible. This world is disgusting. Human beings are awful, are disgusting creatures. And that we only can attain the beauty and the full manifestation of our humanity in the afterlife. That's when the world is beautiful and divine. So you have to die in order for that to happen, right? So all of the history of Christianity negates this idea of the spark. And, and to me, that's what's important. Because even if it's somewhere in the, in the New Testament, Right? It doesn't play out. Nobody cares. Now, Aquinas cares, right? So, and Aquinas changes the world. But Aquinas changes the world qua secular philosopher, not qua Christian philosopher. So, I'm very down on Christianity. Right? And down on Judaism, right? My, my, because I read the Old Testament as saying you have no freedom of religion, no freedom of speech, no economic freedom, you know, and, and you're supposed to obey. It's very authoritarian. I mean, the essence of religion is authoritarianism. God says to you, go kill your son. Yes, sir. Off I go. And that's what makes you a moral hero, is that you don't question. Right? You don't question. Abraham doesn't say to God, go to hell. Right? Which is what he should have said. He obeys. And that is moral authoritarianism. And that's awful. I wrote that down. I want to talk about more about that with you. About what? About Abraham? Yeah, Abraham and Isaac. It's clear cut. It's, it's what they call in law, you know, clear cut and shut case. Right? And, and there are a thousand examples like this. Right? Moses comes down with the Ten Commandments. Comes down from Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments. And he sees a few Jews worshiping a golden calf. He doesn't calmly put the tablets down. <laughs> go over to them and say, you know, you do your thing, we do my thing, but we, we just don't have anything to do with you. Go over there and do your worshiping. We, 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 we believe in one God. That's not what he does. He gets angry, drops the tablets, they shatter. He goes to his brother, they get a bunch of people, they catch a sword and they kill, if I remember right, 30,000 people that day. <laughs> and God rewards them. God says, good job. Right? Aaron, you can be the priest of the Jews from now on because you did such a good job defending my religion from those pagans. Right? And the Old Testament's full of this stuff. Slaughter and mayhem in the name of God and obey, obey, obey. Right? Why doesn't Moses see the land of Israel? Anybody know? I mean, these are, these are, these are what we're raised on, right? Why does Mo Moses is never allowed to go into the state? He, he, he takes the Jews out of, out of Egypt. He, he does all those things. He travels with them for 40 years in the desert, but he's not allowed to go in. He strikes the rock. He strikes the rock instead of just... You know, because God is going to bring the water out of the rock. And he strikes the rock instead of just letting the, letting the water just spring out of it. And God says, you of little belief. You had to hit it so that the water would come out. If you didn't believe, I could do it without you hitting it. So you're not going to see. I mean, really? What kind of God are you? I mean, I've worked 40 years to get the people here. You're not letting me in? Give me a break. 
I mean, it, it, it's full of crap like this. <laughs> it's, it, and it's, it, it really is, it's bad stuff. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourunbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...